Hey everyone, so today we're going to be talking about some sensitive topics such as anxiety, fear, mental health and I just want you to know that if anything comes up this evening or if you hear something that makes you have loads of questions or anything, just if you need to talk to anyone, just know that all of us at You For Christ would love to hear from you. So um, please make sure that you contact some of us or talk if you need to after you hear what I'm about to say. So yeah, today we thought we'd look at mental health because we're back in lockdown and some of you um, that might not have affected anything because you're just going to school like normal or for some of you, um, you might really love being in lockdown, but for some of us, it's really difficult. And we just want to acknowledge that. And um, yeah, just talk about how some people in the Bible dealt with an uh, anxiety particularly, but mental health problems in general. Um, but first of all, we're going to look at some stuff that the Youth for Christ team have dealt with, because we're all human. We've all dealt with uh, mental health, uh, anxieties, worries, fears in our lives. And so some of the Youth for Christ team now are going to share with you a time when they've been really fearful and God has helped them overcome the problem they were struggling with. Hey, okay, so a time for me that was really difficult was when I was a kid and my sister got really ill with her mental health and her mental health was so bad that she had to spend quite a bit of time in hospital. And for me, that was really scary. Uh, and a time when I would often get scared was at night. Um, so I would like dread having to go to bed. Um, I would wake up pretty much every night and just be full of fear. And I was really scared. Um, and that went on for, I think that went on for like years actually. But praise God, uh, he set me free from that. I'm not, I'm not scared anymore. I sleep really well now. Uh, he set me free. Back in 2005, I had loads of problems with my eyes. And uh, there was a real possibility that I was going to lose my sight altogether. I'd already lost a bit of it. Um, and the hospital said that I was going to need um, operations on both my eyes to save my sight. Uh, and at the time, Shah, my wife, was pregnant with our first child. And so there was a real possibility that I wouldn't ever get to see my kids being born um, and ever see them smile or anything like that. And I, I remember feeling really um, just down and, and also quite worried. And lots of people were asking me, you know, wasn't I really worried, which didn't necessarily help. I remember just um, during that time over the course of a few months, just praying and asking God to give me peace and choosing to worship God, no matter the struggle. And just coming out of that period, um, I haven't lost my sight, but even before I had the operations and didn't know what was going to happen, um, just God granted me a sense of peace and just knowing that he was with me and that he was going to see me through whatever and even if I did lose my sight, he still loved me and he still had a plan for my life. Quite some years ago now, in fact, in my late teens, God really highlighted to me uh, an issue, a, a problem, uh, a fear that was kind of controlling and dominating my life. Uh, just a, a total over the top worry about what other people thought about me, uh, whether I was meeting other people's approval or living up to their expectations. And um, God showed me that he wanted me to be to be freer of that. And through looking to Jesus and praying, God's been teaching me and is still teaching me that what others think really doesn't matter. What really matters is what God thinks. And so I need to keep looking to Jesus. That's my responsibility in this, to keep looking to him and asking him to bring healing where it's needed and asking him to help me break free of that fear that can so easily hold me back. So now I'm going to share with you a story of when I really struggled with my mental health and if you know me you might know me as quite energetic, quite bubbly, have a smile on my face, I always do try to be optimistic about things but when I moved to the island I got really sad, <laughs> really um, quite anxious about everything and fear really took over my life I was so scared that I wasn't good enough for the job that I've been given here. I was scared that I would um, let everyone down. And although no one was putting pressure on me, I was putting pressure on myself. And it just meant that I was completely frozen by fear. I didn't know what to do because I felt like everything that I would do would be wrong. And so anxiety and fear just had a complete grip on me. And the way that I dealt with it was by crying every day. And that's okay. But there are other healthy things that I should have done to help me get out of that situation. And it is something that I'm still struggling with at the moment. 
and mental health is often something that lasts for a long time and our struggles with it don't just go away but I have um, found some ways of dealing with it and um, it's by letting God into my life and we're gonna look at a bible story today which really helped me in starting to conquer my anxiety and my fear and it was a story that took place um, over 3,400 years ago so it's a really odd story but the good thing is is God doesn't change and God is the same 3,400 years ago as he is now so I'm going to run through this story with you guys and it's in Exodus chapters 3 and 4 if you're interested in following along but uh, hopefully when we get stuck into this you'll start to see why God is amazing when it comes to helping us with our anxiety and fear. So in Exodus 3 and 4 we have our character Moses. Now Moses is a Bible hero. If you ask anyone who knows anything about the Bible they'll say yeah Moses top guy, top character, 10 out of 10. He, he got the Israelites out of Egypt, he stopped them from being slaves, he split the Red Sea, he did miracles, he had this whole speech which he gave to Pharaoh like he was a top guy. But did you know that Moses actually had a form of social anxiety? And he was really stricken by fear at the start. So when God told him to go to Egypt in the first place, he was completely frozen by fear, he didn't want to do it, he said no to God a few times. And so today we're going to look at how Moses got from being totally anxious and being frozen by fear to being the Bible hero that saved the Israelites from Egypt and Egyptian control. And our first question, which Moses poses to God. So when God turns up in a burning bush and he says, go free my people from Egypt. The first question that Moses says is he says, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? Like, who am I? Now, a bit of background for Moses is he, as I say, has social anxiety. He has a stammer, so he doesn't believe that he can get out a full speech to Pharaoh. Um, so he's not eloquent enough to speak. And he also is a known murderer at this point. So he's like, they, they won't respect me. I have a stammer. I'm a murderer and I have social anxiety. How am I going to get people out of Egypt? And God says one really, really simple sentence in response to this. There's no fine print, there's no terms and conditions. This is what God says. God says, I will be with you. I will be with you. Five words which you'd have thought would calm him down. He'd be like, oh, I've got God on my side. God is coming with me. I'm essentially packing God into my rucksack and I'm going on a trip to Egypt. Life will be good because who can defeat God, right? No, <laughs> this was not Moses' response. Moses had a few more questions to put to God before he was comfortable with the situation. The next question that Moses asks is this. He says, so what if I go to the Egyptians and they don't believe me? What if they say the Lord did not appear to you? Valid question, because Moses is meant to be going to Egypt to free the Israelites from slavery on the authority of God. But what about if the Egyptians just don't believe him and they say, no, you're not from God. We're not going to free the Israelites. Go home. Well, God answers this in a rather strange way, but it has a really important meaning. God says this. Moses, what is that in your hand? And Moses replies, this, it's a staff. And God says, throw it on the ground. So Moses throws the staff on the ground and it turns into a snake and Moses runs away. And this might seem really bizarre, but it does raise a really good point. Because God is bigger than the Egyptians. God can turn a staff into a snake. And later on, Moses uses this as a miracle to prove to the Egyptians that, look, God's on my side. I can turn a staff into a snake. That's all God. And he uses it to prove that God's on his side. But... It does strike fear into the heart of Moses. Moses runs away because he's, there's a snake on the ground. But what it proves is that God is bigger. God is better. God can always one-up the enemy. And so it brings up this subject. It's a thing that we call the fear of the Lord. And the fear of the Lord is, is not fear as in you're afraid of God but it's fear as in you respect and you are in awe of God. The fear of the Lord is bigger than 
the fear of the worldly things. So we should respect God's power more than we should be afraid of what the, is in the world. And so that is the second thing that God says. So God says, I will be with you. And he says, I am bigger than the enemy. So Moses pulls out one of his last questions and he goes, okay, God, you're with me. You're bigger than the enemy, but have you considered this? I am not eloquent. I have never been eloquent, not in the past, nor while you have been speaking to me. I am slow of speech and of tongue. He points out the fact that he has a stammer, he's rubbish at speeches, and he's clearly afraid. So there must be someone who is better. There is, must be someone. God must have, he has everyone in the world to go and sort out this problem. So why is he picking Moses? And the Lord says to him, who gave human beings their mouth? Who makes them deaf or mute? Who gives them sight or makes them blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go, I will help you speak and I will teach you what to say. God isn't having any of it. God is saying, look, I am the creator of you. I created you, I knew you while you were in your mother's womb. I knew you were before you were created. I have made you perfectly, perfectly for this situation. And I'm not stupid. I'm not calling you just some random person. This isn't like I've picked you out of a hat. No, you are the right person and this is the right time, go. And that's God's third argument to Moses' questions. He says, look, I will be with you. I am bigger than the enemy and I am creator. I will get over human obstacles. Because there is nothing that we can put in God's way that he can't get over. There is no obstacle that God just can't little, little step over, you know? God is bigger than anything that we can create. He is bigger. He can see the solution to all of our problems. So that's what God's answers are to the anxiety that Moses is originally facing. However, there are some important things to note about what God says here to Moses. And it's stuff that we need to take into our own hearts, into our own lives. And it's this. God at no point says, Moses, you're being a baby. Grow up. Get a grip. Just do what I say. God acknowledges and respects and works with the anxiety that Moses is facing. And in the same way, when we have anxiety or we uh, have depression or fear or worries or whatever it is that you're dealing with, God doesn't say, get a grip. No, he says, okay, we'll work through this together. He will answer your questions. That's something that I found really helpful from this story is Moses just asks God all the questions. He's like, okay, but what if? Oh, okay, but have you considered this? And we know that God has the answers. God's cool like that. He has the answers to everything. But that doesn't mean that you can't ask him the questions. And so at the moment when I'm feeling really down and sad and I'm like, okay, but God, what about if I'm not good enough for this? Okay, God, what about if this happens and then this happens and then this happens and then I get the blame and oh, it will just go wrong. What about if I just don't do that? God goes, no, let's talk this through. Let's sort this out. And he doesn't expect Moses to do it all in one go on his own. He lets him in gradually. There's different steps that take place. He doesn't have to do everything in one go. And also he gets to do it with people who love and respect him. He goes to Egypt with his brother. So he's not alone. He's not expected to do it all at once. And he can continually ask God questions. Throughout all of the story of Moses, which goes on for ages in the book, in the Bible, Moses is constantly asking questions. He's constantly questioning God on what he's been told to do. And this is something which we can all take into our hearts, that God will be with us. God is bigger than the enemy. He's bigger than the fear that you're feeling. And he is creator of the world. He can overcome any obstacle that is put in his way. And he'll be doing it with us the whole time. Like no matter what you're struggling with right now, God can be with you. So just remember that God is bigger than fear, anxiety, but it doesn't make what you're feeling invalid. Just because God is bigger than it, it doesn't mean that what you're feeling isn't valid because it totally is. So let's just have a think about what we can do now in response to what we've just heard.